All right, guys, we're gonna be talking today about what is the best tiny drone. Now, I haven't obviously got all of the drones that exist out here. I couldn't possibly have all of them. Um, these are a sort of a collection of my favorite that I've used as I was getting into the hobby. And I'll just, I'll talk very quickly about each one. Um, what you'll notice, by the way, is that these are pretty much two of the same type. So this is the red paws range, and then this is the beta FPV range. And I've really, I've done a lot of research on this, guys. I have put in the time to, you know, compile a, a, a few facts about these. I've obviously flown all of these quite a lot. As you can see, like, I've had to modify and fix various types of, you know, features on these drones. This one is a bit of an exception. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But really, with these drones, guys, here's what I would recommend, okay? So if you're first getting into the hobby, you know absolutely nothing about flying drones, get a simulator. I'm gonna be making videos about simulators in the future and about which ones are the best. Get a simulator, learn very cheaply without having to worry about crashing or you know learning a physical uh, skill like flying something like this. You can just use a gaming controller. It's very simple. Get used to flying the drone on a simulator. Then the next thing I would suggest to do is I would suggest to get one of these. This is the Red Paws drone, okay? This is Red Paws RO11. This is a very small lightweight drone which comes with, it comes with these two things. Now this is the FPV goggles, which I actually only use these today. You know, I have some more expensive ones, but these seem to perform better. The, uh, the Red Paws goggles, VR, the VRD1, these perform better than some of the more expensive goggles I have, which is really surprising. And then this controller, which it's not the best controller, but you know, you can't really go wrong. It's got the sort of spiky grips here to sort of grip your thumb so you can control it better. I've pulled the antenna through the casing to give it more range. But like I said, for literally, $70, you can get this entire set, the Red Paws RO11, this controller, and the goggles, which perform really well. And with that, you can pretty much do everything you need to do, guys. You can learn a lot about the hobby. You can easily get your first few videos up and running um, with just that. And as you can see, this, this is a very lightweight drone. It takes any sort of 1S battery you can think of. You can charge it quickly. It's not gonna damage anything. And more importantly, when you compare it, which I will do in a minute, to the motors on the Beta FPV range, these are similar sizes, right, in terms of the drone shell, but the motors on these things, the motors on the Red Paws are a lot, uh, a lot easier to manage and slower in terms of power. They're, they're less powerful than the Beta FPV. Now that's important for a number of reasons, but I would suggest, for reasons I'm gonna explain in a minute, that this should be the first drone you buy. The Red Paws RO11, everything you need to have to fly a drone, there, I have got a uh, complete review of it. Now what I've actually ended up doing is buying a few of these Red Paws drones just because I really I really do bash these things around. They are gonna take a lot of a beating. Sometimes you'll be able to fix them, but sometimes you won't. Um, these actually all fly perfectly now that I've fixed parts of them. But in some cases, like with this one, I've had to solder a new camera on. You know, I've had to uh, improve it in, in a few ways. They are pretty tough. I've been flying this for a few years now, this, this particular type of Red Paws drone. Now, once you've mastered flying around indoors using the Red Paws range, I would highly recommend upgrading to a Beta FPV drone. There are a few reasons for this. Okay, so these Red Paws drones, perfect for your first drone, but they don't have an on-screen display, meaning that you can't, when you're looking through the goggles, you can't see the voltage of your battery, so you don't know when it's going to run out of charge. You can't see things like flight time, how long you've been flying for. And you also can't do what's known as manual mode or, or rate mode, which is where instead of being, when you're flying it through the air, say if you're flying it in this direction, if you move forward, it only t tilts at a certain angle. You know, you can only f fly forward at a certain speed. You certainly can't fly upside down or do any sort of tricks. You can only fly forward like this. Whereas on rate mode, which is only accessible when you upgrade to a beta FPV really, you can actually go in any angle. Like you could fly forward like that, but you could also completely flip fly upside down, do a barrel roll, literally fly in any direction whatsoever. And once you learn how to fly in this mode, it's so much easier, you know, in the long run. You can do all sorts of maneuvers, you're not limited in any direction, and you can really get a complete control over flying a drone. As well as having the on-screen display, which means you can monitor your battery, it's gonna mean that you're you're gonna be so ready for a bigger racing drone. If you've flown one of these, especially if you're flying on like manual mode around the house, and you're getting used to that, the control of the drone, which is a lot harder at first, you're gonna be so ready for using one of the bigger racing drones. It's gonna be very, very beneficial to you long-term. And then what you need to do is obviously, this is the one for indoors, the 65, Beta 65. As soon as you feel ready, upgrade to the Beta 85. This drone is gonna be perfect for flying around outdoors. It also, you can fly indoors, but it's also not big enough to be classed as a racing drone. This thing's really light. 
you don't need to register it, you don't need to take any sort of safety tests to fly this drone. It's not going to do any damage if it crashes into anything, but at the same time it's going to handle really well in wind, and you're going to get some fairly good footage. This is a, a better camera than you would find on the Red Bulls drones. And more importantly, you can fly a bigger battery on this thing. You can fly one of the 550 milliamp hour batteries. You're going to get about a three to four minute flight time as well, and the range is great. I've done a full review on this again, which will be in the... <laughs> I've done a full review on this before, the link will be in the description. But that is what I would suggest to get into FPV flying, get a Red Pause, fly it around, then upgrade to something with an on-screen display, I would suggest getting this one. And then when you can fly this, the 65 really well, get the Beta 85. They all work with the same gear, the same goggles, and the same controller from Beta FPV, which I'll go over in a minute. So as I was saying guys, the Beta FPV drones, all the blue ones you see below, these can all be flown with this Beta FPV transmitter. This is a perfect one. Now guys, this is actually really good um, for beginners flying FPV, getting into the hobby. This controller is so good. It has such a great range compared to the other ones, like compared to the Red Paws one, which is really for beginners in the house. This can be flown outdoors. This is a, a much better signal, much more power. You can recharge it via micro USB, whereas with that one you need batteries. And this, without having to bind or configure really anything, you can just turn this thing on, and whichever one of these Beta FPV drones is on, this will bind to it immediately, and you'll, you'll be able to control it. You can also configure you configure these buttons, so like I've got it set so that green is self-leveling mode, and then red is manual mode, or rate mode. You can also arm using the green and red switches here. And there's also other options you can configure as well, like I haven't really got much into it, but yeah, it's so good for flying these drones, it really is. And as you can see here, you've got the spiky grip on the top of the, uh, the controllers, which means you're never going to slip. You're always going to have complete con precision control over flying this thing. Whereas if you compare that to something... If you compare that to something like this, you're always going to slip on these, on these, uh, these joysticks, and they're always never going to be... They're never going to give you full control. That is the path I would suggest taking if you want to get into FPV flying. Red Paws, Beta 65, Beta 85, using this controller.